This video is regarding the investigation that is seroprotein aprophoresis, serum immunofixation, the free light chain assay, which are being used as a diagnostic and a follow up investigations for the monoclonal chromopathies, which is also called the paraproteinemias or the dysproteinemias. The typical example being the myeloma. Before going into the investigation, let's see what are these monoclonal chromopathy. These are nothing but a group of disorders characterized by the proliferation of single clonoplasma cell and results in the production of abnormal immunoglobulins in excess. So the M protein or the M component suggests M stands for the monoclonality. This M protein also called the paraprotein monoclonal protein or the M component in the uh, serum electrophoresis which is being mentioned as M component it is nothing but the monoclonal protein. As we know the immunoglobulin consists of light chain and the heavy chain. The abnormal plasma cell can secrete this whole immunoglobulin or only the light chain or only the heavy chain. The light chain, the typical example being in primary amyloidosis, also called the AL amyloidosis, light chain deposition disease. The heavy chain, the example being the heavy chain deposition disease. So another diagram showing how this plasma cell being found from the bone marrow precursor, lymphoblast, B lymphocyte, plasma cells. These abnormal plasma cells can secrete excessive amount of monoclonal immunoglobulin, either of both light and heavy chain a combination, or only the light chain or only the heavy chain. So coming to the first investigation, the serum protein electrophoresis. The advantage is it detects the monoclonal protein in the serum as well as in the urine also. In the urine it is called the urinary protein electrophoresis. The 24 hour urine collection is required for this. And it can detect how much amount of monoclonal protein is there. So this is a quantitative value can be available. And it is used in the follow up of response to treatment also. How the monoclonal protein have been reduced for that also it is also useful. The main disadvantage is it cannot detect the type of immunoglobulin, whether it is IgG or IgA or IgM, whether it is kappa or lambda light chain. It won't detect this investigation, can't tell about the type of immunoglobulin which is forming the monoclonal component. And sometimes, if the monoclonal component is low, it might miss, or if there is a polyclonal association with the monoclonality of some particular immunoglobulin, that might be missed by this. And the sensitivity of the investigation alone is approximately 75% in detecting the monoclonal component. And this is the Typical graph of a serum protein electrophoresis, which consists of five uh, peaks. First is the for albumin, second one alpha one, alpha two, beta one, and the gamma globulin. Usually, the monoclonality is being seen in the uh, gamma globulin site. This is for the site for all the IgG, A, M, B, R, E, or kappa or lambda. Sometimes it might seen in the beta component also. So this is an example of a graph. If the same protein electrophoresis if used in urine this is called the urine electrophoresis urine protein electrophoresis what is the advantage the advantage is we are able to see how much amount of monoclonal protein that is being uh, being passed in the urine so that may give a clue about how much monoclonal being uh, filtered by the kidney and how uh, what is the possibility of damage to the kidney and for follow up also urine protein electrophoresis can be used coming to the next one serum immunofixation the advantages are it is more sensitive in picking up the monoclonal protein and it is a qualitative it is not a quantitative one and it is the type of immunoglobulin whether it is IgG or A or M whether it is kappa or lambda we can find out based on this investigation only and it can detect as low as 0 0.02 gram per liter or 0.2 gram per deciliter of monoclonal protein in the serum and 0 0.04 gram per deciliter in the urine it can detect up to this level since majority of the commercially available immunofixation detects for the it, it is based on the antibodies to this particular immunoglobin so it detects IgG, IgA, IgM for IgD and E we have to require separate immunofixation to detect those immunoglobulins so this is the advantage of this the sensitivity increases to 85 percentage plus if we use this with serum immuno sorry serum protein electrophoresis so the main disadvantage are it won't give the concentration of the monoclonal protein that's why it should be used along with the serum protein electrophoresis and for anti-IgE and IgD type of immunoglobulin, we have to order a separate immunofixation to detect these two immunoglobulin because the commercially available usually checks for IgG, IgA, IgM, kappa and lambda. So these are the points with respect to the serum immunofixation. Similarly, this immunofixation can be used in urine also. In the urine baseline, we can find out how much is being filtered, what is the type of immunoglobulin which might help in the prognosis, treatment and follow up also. And third one, free light chain assay, it detects the unbound free light chains. 
and the normal values is for kappa it is approximately 3 to 19 milligram per decimeter for lambda it is 5 to 27 milligram and the normal kappa to lambda ratio is 2 is to 1 and the range is from 0.2 to 1.6 this is the normal ratio for free light chain assay if we combine serum protein electrophoresis serum immunofixation and this free light chain assay the sensitivity increases to approximately 99 95 to 99 percentage in detecting the monoclonal component and in a patient with renal dysfunction because the free light chains are being mainly filtered by the kidney the concentration can rise up to 20 times the baseline that's why the absolute value might be misleading that's why we have to look at the ratio of the kappa to lambda uh, ratio more than three is unlikely due to renal disease so there is some kind of monoclonality when the ratio is more than three and even if the ratio is normal ratio is 2 is to 1 if the ratio is rising as 1 is to 2 or it is rising more than 3 there is a possibility of underlying monoclonality and this free light chain assay can also be used in the follow-up for the detection how much it is being reduced but the commonly used test for follow-up after treatment with the monoclonality is the serum protein electrophoresis so we will see a example of these three investigation this was the test done for a 50 year old male with the symptoms of hypercalcemia and renal dysfunction this is the report of serum protein electrophoresis this is mentioned that this was done from the large path lab and they have mentioned this test being done by this capillary electrophoresis method as we see here m spike is present and the value they have given was 0.7 gram per deciliter they have given the quantitative value of the m component as we see in the graph first is for albumin alpha 1 alpha 2 beta and the gamma globulin so we are able to detect the m component at this point in the gamma globulin region but we don't know what is the type of immunoglobin contributing to this so in the interpretation they have mentioned leave this point just we have to focus this m spike is present in the gamma globulin region this is the example of serum protein electrophoresis report then in the same patient before the serum immunofixation this is regarding the turbimetry report like immunoglobin levels they have mentioned absolute value of immunoglobin g a so this is the command from the lab just leave it just look at these values so these values they have mentioned almost in the normal range and we will see the serum immunofixation so this is the serum immunofixation report where we are able to see the monoclonal component being from igg and then the lambda region so in the interpretation what they have mentioned so they have combined the reports of serum protein electrophoresis along with the serum immunofixation in the protein electrophoresis they have mentioned m spike was there and in the immunofixation they have found out the m spike being arrived from the igg and this is the commonest immunoglobulin associated igg myeloma is the most common type and the it is with lambda also the m component is being found by the igg and lambda this is an example of immunofixation and in the same patient the free light chain as a value also the absolute value is 165 for kappa on 06 for lambda the ratio is 1.5 since this patient have renal dysfunction had renal dysfunction the ratio is almost normal but the absolute value is little bit elevated so these are all the example for these three investigation and regarding the diagnostic criteria how to diagnose this mgus moldering multiple myeloma multiple myeloma i have posted a separate video thank you